Garloe, Rusty, and Duncan were looking at the early morning sky. Everyone's so much happier when the springtime comes. Yeah, everyone accepts their top and hat in Mr. Percival, though. They seem to be making us work harder than ever. I'm tired of these coastal runs. He just wants everything to be ready for the holidays. Both controllers do. Anyway, salty air might me feel all cheerful inside inside my big fat brain I got. Which you can't see, obviously. Be quiet, Rusty. It's only the countryside that gets me fired up. It's the only place to be. Now I'm gonna go collect my freight cars. Scarloe and Rusty had to take some empty freight cars to the docks. In a sighting, they saw an old dump truck just sitting by the quay. He looked very sad. Hey, what are you doing here? Aren't you very old and should be at the scrapyard? Well, they called me old Rusty Nelson and told me I wasn't useful anymore. Now only the mice go in my dumper. Well, Nelson, you may be dusty, but I gotta say you look in perfect shape. Just then the dock manager arrived. I have some goods for you to take away. Now please take them away. Excuse me, sir, but can you tell us about this truck? Oh, old Nelson, he's been here for years. He'll be broken up one day. Well, at least when we find the time. Oh no. We... We'll try and help you. But I'm afraid Scarlowe didn't know how. Meanwhile, Duncan was enjoying himself pulling his freight cars on along the line. They were full of fuel. This is the life. I'm surprised no one else has tried doing this. But he was heading for trouble. One of his fuel cars was leaking. Suddenly, one of them caught fire. Oh no! Help me! Help me, dear lord! Luckily, he reached a sighting, and his driver called the fire station. It's fuel, and it's dangerous! As Scarloe and Rusty arrived at the scene, they saw the smoke and a guard stopping them. Sparks from Duncan's funnel has set the cars ablaze. Well, the fire's under control, but it's quite a mess. You said the countryside got you all fired up, Duncan. <laughs> but I don't think you meant it this way. Be quiet, Rusty. It was a stupid car's fault, not mine. <laughs> it's safe to proceed now. Scarlow and Rusty now felt sorry for Duncan. However, it wasn't long before they reached Dry Off Station. Later, as they were having a rest at the water tower, they suddenly heard a commotion. Hey driver, what's going on? It's another fire at the vacation cabin, or whatever it's called. We better see what we can do. The fire truck had a big problem. We're completely out of water. We can't use seawater because it clogs our works. There's no reason. We will just have to let that building burn if we can't think of anything. Then Scarlowe had an idea. Why don't you use the water in my tank? I refilled them a few minutes ago. The fireman wasted no time. You're a clever engine. Soon the fire was out. But the cabin where the vacationers go was destroyed. Well, the vacationers can't sleep on the beach, and we don't even have a truck that can bring our bricks over here for the foundation. <gasps> what about Nelson? He could bring the bricks in. Yeah, and they could be strong ones, too. What a good idea, Rusty. Let's ask Mr. Percival. They phoned Mr. Percival at Dryaw, who agreed. He'll be spick and span by the time you collect him. And he was, and very happy to. I can't thank you guys enough. I feel splendid. And they set off happily for Nelson's new home. Everyone agreed there was nothing old or rusty about Nelson, and he will always be really useful indeed.